Welcome one. Welcome all. God bless each and every one of you for tuning in to tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. I'm your host, evangelist Anita Rivera. It is the day after Thanksgiving, 2000, uh, November 25th, 2022. Hope you all had a really good time with your friends, your family, or just with the Lord. Come on. Um, I'll tell you what, we need more time with the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and when I say we need more time, it's not so much an extension of time as much as it is, as much as it is to utilize the current time that God has given to us because time, according to the book of Revelation, will delay no longer. So we have to be good stewards of what God has given us and take the time to worship. Come on. Take the time to praise. Take time in the presence of the Lord and, you know, that's all available to you as you submit your life to Jesus Christ, as you surrender your life to Jesus Christ, as you cry out to God to save you. And uh, he, in, in doing so, help, you know, he brings forth a spirit of repentance. He fills you with his Holy Spirit and now you're sealed for the day of redemption because time again will delay no longer truly the day of the lord is at hand friends i have uh quite a few uh had has had several reports to look at this evening and it was kind of hard to decide which one to share with you all tonight but i think i'm gonna share this particular report with you all coming from the most important news.com here it is what a choice a tyrannical world government or a nuclear war all right well, let's get right into it because I don't know about you, but that's not a choice that's good. I always say choose, you know, some people say choose wisely. I say choose what choices you even decide to ponder on wisely. Not all choices come from God. Very rarely do they ever do. Come on. I know that God did put a choice for us when he said, see you that I set forth before you this day. Um, life and death, blessing and cursing. And then he helps us with the decision making on that, the choice, if you will. He said, choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Now, that is a choice that comes from God. And now, and, and, and whenever a choice comes from God, he helps us make the right choice. You ever notice that? When he gives a test, he always helps in providing the answer for it. That could be in times of study, times of worship, times of preparation, consecration, sanctification, times in the presence of God. But this is a choice that does not come from God, and this is clearly an end time choice. Let's get right into the article. A tyrannical world government or a nuclear war, if you had to choose between living under an extremely oppressive world government or living through a nuclear war, which one would be your choice? Personally, I don't like either of the two options, but in recent days, Western leaders have been trying to convince the global population that we will either have one or the other. Now, according to them, either we can submit to a global order, and I have audio on that, I'll share with you here in a moment. And this global order would be dominated by the values and the agenda of the Western elite, or we can accept a multipolar world, which they say will eventually lead to widespread chaos and nuclear war. Now, needless to say, Western politicians are going to try very hard to get us to choose the former. On Friday, and I'm talking just last Friday, French President Emmanuel Macron delivered a speech at the Asia-Pacific Economic Corporation, also known as APEC, a summit in Bangkok, even though France is not even an actual member of this cooperation. Anyway, during this particular speech, Macron lamented the fact that rapidly deteriorating relations between the United States and China are tearing the world apart and he boldly declared that we really need, that what the world really needs, and I quote, is a single world order. French President Emmanuel Macron called for world government in a speech Friday, claiming it would avoid conflicts between competing superpowers. 
He said, we need a single world order, said Macron, told, telling the audience at the ongoing Asian Pacific Economic Cooperation APEC Summit in Bangkok, Thailand. He said, are you on the U.S. side or the China side, Macron asked rhetorically. Because now, progressively, a lot of people would like to see that there are two orders in this world. This is a huge mistake, he says. Even for both the United States and China, he added, after comparing the two superpowers to big elephants, and I quote, in the geopolitical jungle. Now, of course, when he says that we need a single world order, he is not suggesting one in which nations such as China and Russia are equal partners. No, what Macron and other Western leaders envision is a global system that is governed by Western rules and Western values. Now, as he delivered his line about a single global order, Macron slowed down and pronounced each of the words with special emphasis. I have audio. Let me take a moment and play it for you. I want to make sure that my volume is up. It's only a 20 second audio clip. Here it is. Are you on the US and the Chinese side? Because now, progressively, a lot of people would like to see there, there are two orders in this world. This is a huge mistake, even for both the US and China. We need a single global order. Mm, mm, mm. All right, listen, in case you still thought it was a conspiracy theory that elitists want a world order, you just heard French President Emmanuel Macron speaking at the APEC summit that we need a single global order. Many are after hearing that, obviously, have a feeling that Macron can picture himself possibly leading a single global order someday. Of course, such delusions of grandeur can be extremely dangerous. Meanwhile, other Western leaders, such as United States Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, are warning that a truly multipolar world would, would excuse me, that a truly multipolar world would be one that would inevitably lead to nuclear confrontation and nuclear conflict. In that report, it said United States Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin warned Saturday, Russia's invasion of Ukraine offers a preview of a world where nuclear armed countries could threaten other nations and said Beijing, like Moscow, seeks a world where, where might makes right. Austin made the remarks at the annual Halifax International Security Forum, which attracts defense and security officials from Western democracies. He now, you know, please understand politicians all over the Western world have been talking a lot about the threat of nuclear war lately. It is thought that they're trying to use the threat of a nuclear war as a scare tactic in order to advance their agenda. Because if they truly were concerned about nuclear war, they would be working really hard. And I mean, really hard to stop one from actually happening. But instead of pursuing peace with China and Russia through diplomatic means, you have Western leaders seeming to have decided that now is the time to get really tough with China and Russia. Ultimately, our leaders would love to see both regimes collapse and be replaced by governments that are already to uh, embrace Western values and a single global order that is led by the Western nations. Western politicians keep hoping that war in Ukraine would lead to such an outcome in Russia. And I'm sure that they are trying to figure out how to use the coming Chinese invasion of Taiwan to bring about such an outcome in China. We have seen so many other governments get toppled over the decades, and now the Western elite are going after the two biggest fish in the pond. But being, by, you know, I say, excuse me, as it is said, as it is said, but by being so aggressive, they were literally bringing us to the brink of nuclear conflict. Earlier this year, you had a study that was released that concluded that a full-blown nuclear exchange between the United States and Russia would result in billions of deaths. But about 360 million people would be killed by the original nuclear exchange. That's the good news, they're saying. The bad news? is that about 5 billion people would starve to death during the nuclear winter that would immediately follow. That report came out as follows. According to a peer review study published in the journal Nature Food in August 2022, 
A full-scale nuclear war between the United States and Russia, which together hold more than 90% of the world's nuclear weapons, would kill 360 million people directly and more than 5 billion indirectly by starvation during a nuclear winter. Now, friends, in the aftermath of a full-blown nuclear exchange between the United States and Russia, global temperatures around the planet would plunge dramatically because of all the soot that is injected into the atmosphere. A war between the United States, its allies, and Russia, who possesses, listen, more than 90% of the global nuclear arsenal, could produce more than 150 teragrams of soot in a nuclear winter. A teragram is a unit of measurement, uh, excuse me, a teragram is a unit of measurement equal to one trillion grams, and models show that soot injections into the atmosphere larger than five teragrams would lead to massive food shortages in almost every single country in the planet. Now, in such an environment, very little would be able to be grown, obviously. And so global food production would soon fall to only a small fraction of what it is today. In a scenario of a war between the United States and Russia, you would have the global average calorie production from crops that would decrease by around 90% within four years after a nuclear war. Nuclear war, war would also reduce the global fish supply. If you hear that sound, it's raining here in San Antonio, Texas, very nicely. Anyway, people in most nations would obviously consume fewer calories and their bodies burn at rest, and more than 5 billion people would die by the end of the second year after the initial nuclear attack. Western leaders are trying to convince us that the way to avoid such a fate is to embrace their vision of a single world order that is led by them. And the truth is that there are a whole lot of people out there that would be more than willing to give up their freedoms for the security of a one world government. Such people are just like many of the mindless sheep that were recently spotted walking around in a circle for 12 days straight. Have you heard that report? Apparently dozens of sheep have been eerily walking around in a circle for 12 straight days in northern China's inner Mongolia region. The bizarre behavior captured on surveillance video shows the large flock continuously marching clockwise in a nearly perfect circle on a farm. I must admit, those are not the only animals that have been going through such interesting and, dare I say, biblical, prophetically in nature, type of erratic behavior. Of course, to put it more of a hindsight perspective, uh, you know, it is our hope that many people would wake up and that maybe be like, uh, you know, you know, sheep that go astray. I mean, if you're going to be a sheep, why not follow the shepherd? Not fall into a ditch. Come on. Now is the time to do that. We do not want a world government. We don't want a single global leader. We don't want nuclear war either. You cannot give us one or the two and say, well, choose the lesser of two evils. We don't, we, th 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 that's not the way it's going to work. The Western elitists are really making a mess of things, friends. And we are all going to suffer the consequences of their incredibly reckless decisions if things do not change soon. Now, I, I want to share with you some particular scriptures. What does the Bible have to say? about a tyrannical government, about tyranny. Let's take a moment. Let's visit some scriptures. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 1 through 2 says, Woe to those who decree iniquitous decrees, and the writers who keep writing oppression, to turn aside the needy from justice and to rob the poor of my people of their right, that widows may be their spoil, and that they may make the fatherless their prey. Acts chapter 5 verse 29, but Peter and the apostles answered to the Roman government, we must obey God rather than men. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 16 says, whoever oppresses the poor to increase their own wealth or gives to the rich will only come to poverty. 
Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 26 says, Like a muddied spring or a polluted fountain is a righteous man who gives way before the wicked. Ezekiel chapter 25 verse 17 I will execute great vengeance on them with wrathful rebukes then they will know that I am the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon them Exodus chapter 1 verse 12 but the more they were oppressed the more they multiplied and the more they spread abroad and the Egyptians were in dread of the people of Israel so you really want to be careful about putting the people of God under a bondage, under a weight of bondage, because instead of killing them off, you may just multiply them. You may just do the exact, the exact, the exact opposite. The Egyptians were in dread of the people of Israel. So they ruthlessly made the people of Israel work as slaves and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and in brick and in all kinds of work in the field. And in all their work, they ruthlessly made them work as slaves. How are we to be in the times that we're living in, in the midst of such so-called choices? Understand that if a choice is presented to you, I hope you have your scales. What I mean by that is that each and every choice or decision that's presented before you and even places a demand with it, to demand you to give an answer, to get, you know, to demand you to give a response and, and, and you have to decide, well, what what choice do I make? Please understand that you have it in your right, as an expected right, to be sure to weigh on the scales of the Lord that is presented before you at the same time that those choices come with you, come to you, to see if that choice is even from God. You don't have to give an answer. You don't have to respond. If it's not a choice that is not from the Lord Jesus Christ. And you may say, well, evangelist, this is, uh, you know, this is a choice that could maybe cause me to lose my home, lose my marriage, lose the things that I've worked so hard for. And that's the problem, friends. Why is such a choice being presented to you? Why is this choice that is covered in fear and anxiety and a lying spirit being presented to you. You must call it out for what it is. And in this case, with the report I just shared with you, no, we will not receive a tyrannical world government. We will not choose that. And no, we will not accept nuclear war. That will not be our choice either. We have a solution. We have an answer. Now listen, I'm going to present to you the 66 books of the Word of God. The promises of God are yes and amen to the glory of God the Father. Just because you, just because these people are involved in these so-called choices and decision making and they put themselves in a type of position of authority does not mean we have to participate in it. We're in this world, the Bible says, but we're not of it. We're but sojourners in this world. But our focus is is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of God says in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We run our race that is set before us. So don't you dare present to me some type of so-called decision or choice as if you became my God. We rebuke every lying spirit, every false spirit, because that's what that is. And we say, no, no, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, if you don't know the Lord, if you're not born again, if your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, then what's going to come is both. The so-called choice that they're presenting to people, a tyrannical government or a nuclear war, even if you were to choose the first to avoid the last, 
and thinking that you're saving yourself up, you know, and thinking that you're saving yourself by giving away your freedom for the sake of so-called peace and safety. Listen, the Bible says a sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape because they're going to cry out peace and safety. But there is no peace and there's no safety outside of Jesus because there's people who are trying to do things outside of the Lord. And what's going to happen is that now the world... The system, and if you're part of that system, that Babylonian system, is going to have that cup of sin that will be overflowing, and you're not going to get a choice of getting one or the other, even if you so callingly choose, you're, you're going to end up getting both, because it's a two-deal package. Where, where do you get that from, Evangelist? Well, it's found in the book of Revelation, chapter 13. It's found in... The book of, uh, again, book of Revelation, chapter 17. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, talks about a tyrannical government. Let me share with you a bit about it. Revelation, chapter 13, says, starting in verse 1, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who was able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear to hear, let him hear. Same chapter, but going down a few verses. This is what a tyrannical government will look like in the last days. And we are living in the last days. Verse 13, he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth and the side of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He calls us all both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to take a mark on their right hand or on their forehead, listen, tyrannical government, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has a mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Now listen, that's tyrannical government. And now you're saying, well, evangelist, I don't know if I want that. Uh, I, I'm just going to choose the nuclear, then get it over and done with. Not so fast, not so fast. I mentioned Revelation chapter 17. That's regarding the fall of Babylon. But let me take you to Revelation chapter 9, the sixth trumpet. The angels from the Euphrates. This is what nuclear war would look like in the last days. Are you ready? This is just a portion. There's actually a couple of other scriptures that mention how nuclear war will be in the last days. And it's very detailed. And there I say the word grotesque. Revelation chapter 9 verse 13 says, Then the six angels sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the six angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour the day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Hear this. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red. 
hyacinth blue, sulfur yellow, and the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions. And out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. These are all details of how a nuclear war will be. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed. By the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths for their power is in their mouth and in their tails for their tails are like serpents having heads and with them they do harm but the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands that they should not worship demons and idols of gold silver brass stone and wood which can neither see nor hear nor walk and they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality, or their thefts. What about the four horsemen of the apocalypse? This is all in the Bible, friends. You're not giving me a choice of any of this. I already know what the Bible says about it. I hope you've been studying to show yourself approved, my friends. A worker not needing to be ashamed of what the Bible has to say so that you are in the truth already. You're not going to be toss to and fro like every wind of doctrine. Revelation chapter 6 verse 3 when he opened the second seal I heard the second living creature saying come and see another horse fiery red went out and was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth and that people should kill one another and there was given to him a great sword. There's so much about all this Oh, but it's better to have a tyrannical government. You don't have to go through that. No, I just shared with you Revelation chapter 13. Oh, well, then it's better to just get it over and done with because, you know, a uh, nuclear war sounds better than nothing. No, because I just shared with you that even that, that even a war will take place. Six trumpet is going to be a terrible war, a large army, a great war. Nuclear war will actually come out of that. It's going to kill mankind. It's going to kill mankind, but a third of them. Everybody else is going to be alive. And just when you think, well, I made it, um, there's going to be such a spirit that's going to accompany this war. A spirit of Antichrist that people will continue to deny God and not repent. Even though they just went through the most catastrophic war of all time. That is a great tribulation. So we must understand how late the hour is so that we can... If, you know, if you're not saved, we need to be born again. You need to surrender your life to Jesus. You need to, you need to cry out to God to save you. I believe that the Holy Spirit is the only one that can make that possible. And I believe that is here with us right now. The Holy Spirit is the very Spirit of God. He's the very presence of God. God is omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. He is all-knowing everywhere, and He's all-powerful. And God is here with you, and He loves you, and He's, he's, where, he's where you are at right now. And it's not his will that you perish, but that you receive eternal life. It's not his will that you perish, that you die in your sin, and you go to a place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's not his will that you go there. It's not his will. So much so that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, into the world over 2,000 years ago, so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. The Bible says that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. If anyone has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. You may say, well, my, my sister's deaf. You know, she can't hear anything, evangelist. So she, she has an ear, but she can't hear. Yes, yeah, she does. She can hear. She doesn't even need to have actual ears. The spirit of a man is the hearing aid, if you will, of that individual. It's how a person can hear. God is not, you know, we can't bear our own salvation. It's impossible. It will always fall short in the presence of God. Listen, the Bible says that it is, it is appointed unto man once to die and then to judgment. So what we're going to be before the judgment seat of Christ before we know it. And we're going to have to give an account for everything that we have done and did. Everything that we have done and, and said. We're, we're going we're to have to give an account for every idle word that was spoken. All the deeds that were done in our body. And it's not, I must say this again, it's not God's will that you go before him 
on that day and you're in fear of judgment. First John chapter four, verse 18. Can I, can I end this broadcast with you with this very important portion of scripture? First John chapter four, uh, starting in verse, verse 17. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. All right. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Hear this. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. So on the day of judgment, we are really to be looking forward to it, knowing that judgment is gonna be pronounced and decreed in our favor, according to the book of Daniel. If you are fearing the day of judgment, if you're fearing meeting your maker, that means you're not ready, and, and, and you're afraid that you won't, you know, you're, you're afraid. You're not sure what, what happens after life stops here on earth. You're not sure what happens after you die. And that is an important uh, thing that you need to understand before the time comes. You can have every, uh, you know, I dotted and every T crossed on your to-do list for your life. The right insurance, the right spouse, the right house, the right job, the right promotion, the right clothing, the right car, the right everything. The right kids, the right church you go to, the right church you don't go to. Whatever the case may be, you may have everything so callingly in your order. And it seems right, but there's still that something missing. And you've been searching, but you're not even sure what you're searching for. You've been on a path, you're not even sure what path you're on. And God says, listen, there's not a word yet on your tongue that I don't know yet. God is telling you that he's the one who knows you're lying down and you're rising up. He's the one that searches your hearts and he's the one who's been testing your mind. And it's a gift to you according to your works, according to your ways and to the fruit of your doings. And he, he's checking all of us out. We can't be astounded by this. We can't be shocked by, oh my gosh, well, I thought God was a loving God. I didn't know he's going to like look at me and, 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 you know, check me out. Yeah, yeah, he is. Why, why wouldn't he? But he's not trying to check you out to fail you, if you will. He's not trying to check you out to condemn you. God forbid. He's checking you out so that he can reward you. So that he knows how, he knows how late the hour is. He knows how quickly we're going to be before him. And he knows that if there's any place in our life that's crooked or lame or broken, he knows that it would need to be healed and how it needs to be healed. And no person on this earth can do it except him. You can go to any doctor you want to. Oh, you can have all the money in the world, but you can still die in your sin and go straight to hell if you have not allowed Jesus Christ to take over your life. And it's really that simple for you to be in right standing with God. It's not hard. It's nothing hard about it. What makes it hard is your so-called decision that you see it as a choice. You say, well, I'm not sure if I'm ready now. I, I thank you for letting me know this evangelist. I'll think about it. I'll ponder it. No, no, no. Uh, you're not going to tell me if your neighbor's house is on fire and you go over there and you bang the door down and they're just rising up from bed. So listen, I'll think about leaving. You're, you're going to probably throw them over your shoulder and take them out lest they die. And yet you think that God's just going to sit around and wait for you while the fires of hell are creeping up right behind your back. And you're feeling the heat of it, friends. So many of you are feeling the heat of this thing. You're feeling it so much so the hair sticks up in the back of your neck at times. You wonder why you get freaked out at times and why the thoughts of death bother you. It's because God doesn't want that to bother you anymore, but it's coming to the, the fullness of your, of, your, of your frontal mentality. 
so that it can be faced and it could be put to rest. But you can't do it. No pill can do it. No drink, alcoholic beverage, uh, no hanging out. No matter how much you hang out with friends and family and whatever life changes you decide to do, none of that will make it go away. Only God can make it go away. And God's not mad at you. God is pleased to do this for you. But you must surrender your life to Jesus. You can't say, well, good, I'm glad God is willing to do this as my lucky rabbit's foot, as my good luck charm. Thanks, homeboy. You try to give God a, a, a you know high five or hit that rock and and God's going to be down with you. That's not the way it works. God is not looking for only 10% of you. He's not looking for you to surrender just that one part of your fear of death and the rest of your life you could just live in whatever way you're doing. No! You have to surrender your entire life to him. If you don't, then it's not, it's going to be, you could surrender all day long to 10%. You can surrender all day long the fear that you have about whatever it is that you're, you know, you're, you know, you're having or facing. But if you don't surrender the rest of your life to him, if you, don't, if you don't surrender and invite Jesus to take over every part of your life, you're not going to make it. And it's not God's will that any man perish, but that all come to repentance. Don't make it difficult for yourself because the Bible says that whom the Son says free is free indeed. Don't think that the 10% you're willing to give to God or the 20% of your life that you're willing to give to God and, you, and, and the 80% you want to keep back or the 90% you're trying to keep for yourself is saving you. It's not saving you. It's keeping you in a bondage and in a lie from the pit of hell. And God says he's willing to serve you right now and help you with this. Please let him help you and don't rebel against him so that you can find your rest and you can be refreshed in his presence and be saved. Friends, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. As always, it is a privilege and a pleasure to bring to you all the word of God. World reports matching biblical prophecy, clearly. <laughs> um, I want to invite you to learn more about me and my church ministry on my website at www.emof.org, E-M-O-A-F.org. Uh, you can also... Uh, while you're there, learn more about our teachings and preachings. I invite you to do that. If you or someone you know are in need of a letter of religious exemption, you can email me directly at anita at emoaf.org, A-N-I-T-A at E-M-O-A-F dot O-R-G. While um, you do that, uh, please know that I will respond within 24 hours. Be sure to check your spam folder. Be sure to check your, your, your junk folder if you have not heard a response from me because if your email server doesn't recognize my email address, it may send our email directly to those folders, the spam folder and all that. So, you know, you want to avoid that but by simply just checking, okay? But we will respond to your email within 24 hours if you are in need of a letter of religious exemption. We don't ask you questions about, oh, how long you've been in the faith and uh, how long do you know Jesus? No, we're here to cover you because honestly, you shouldn't be asked those questions by employers, okay? Um, this is very serious, I think. Uh, no, it's beyond me thinking it, although it, that matters, uh, but lawfully speaking, uh, legal lines have been crossed where employers have asked very invasive and personal questions concerning people's faith and belief. and. It's humiliating, I'll be honest with you, because that's so sacred that should not ever be opened. And um, anyway, we're living in the last days. Allow our church to help you and cover you in this matter if you need it, or if you know someone who does need it. I'll be sure to put my contact information to this broadcast. It'll be in the more uh, description section uh, in our YouTube channel, just right underneath the video, and also on Facebook as well, where you can see it. Uh, also, I want to invite you, listen, it's the giving season, it's holiday season. Take a moment to show your appreciation and your love towards the work of this end time ministry by donating to our, our church at www.emof.org, E-M-O-A-F dot O-R-G. Your donation helps make the work of this end time ministry possible. And I thank you for your love towards the work of God. The Lord bless you all. Until the next broadcast report, may you all... Be richly blessed in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.